Hey everyone, RJ here with CB Tech, and today I'll be giving my review on the Samsung Galaxy J7 Crown. Now I purchased this phone on Black Friday of 2018, and I have used this phone on and off for several months, and so now I'm giving my review on this phone. Now first of all, I want to give you the specs. Now this phone does run a 1.6 gigahertz octa-core Exynos 7885 processor with a Mali G71 GPU. This phone's got two gigabytes of RAM and 16 gigabytes of onboard storage. Now, yes, that might be low storage and this phone should have had at least 32 gigs, but that's just the way it is. The screen is a 5.5 inch display, 720 by 1280 resolution. Now, looking here at the hardware of the phone, uh, I like the way this phone looks. I really do. It has that really nice stealth look to it here. I mean, you can about barely tell where the bezel stop and start here just by looking at the phone. Uh, it's, it's a good looking phone. And I've been fairly impressed with this device ever since I have used it. Now the back is not removable, so you cannot access your battery. So the back cannot come off of this phone. It has an internal battery that is not removable. If you want to um, find your SD and SIM card, Right there on the side is a little SIM card and SD tray. In the box, it'll come a little, with a little SIM tool. You put that right in here and it will eject your SD and SIM card. Okay, on the left side here, we got your space volume rocker. On top, we have a secondary microphone. On the bottom, micro USB charging, 3.5 millimeter headset jack with microphone. On the right, we do have your power button as well as your side mounted speaker. On the rear, of course, is your rear mounted camera with flash, Samsung branding, and on the front is your physical home button, recent apps, and back button, your camera, and your receiver. Now, this phone does not have a fingerprint scanner. However, it does have Face ID. Now, powering the phone on here, you will see that the phone is, like I said, 720p, but the display looks really good. It's got a really nice, vibrant, clear look to it here. Viewing angles are good. And the phone is snappy, okay? I do have Nova Launcher installed on this device. And for two gigabytes of RAM, you know, that's gonna be fine for most. It really is. I mean, I have had no problems with the RAM in this phone. Of course, you cannot have 50 apps open in the background and expect it to run flawlessly. But, you know, two gigabytes of RAM in this phone here, I know that for 2018, 2019, Three gigabytes should be the minimum, and I do agree, but for a budget device like this, you know, two gigabytes of RAM, in my opinion, is just fine. Now, like I may mention, the processor is the 7885, which is the same processor that's in Samsung Galaxy A6, which is a higher mid-range device. So performance in the Processing department should be pretty close together. However, there is more RAM and so forth and so on in the A6. And this processor is being found on a lot of newer Samsung phones that are coming out. But performance has been great. I mean, no problem whatsoever. It has been blazing fast. It has been a good experience. Now, just going around the phone here a little bit here. Got your drop down here with all of your stuff that you need. Your airplane mode, flashlight location, a blue light filter, your, your smart view. This phone has Dolby Atmos, which is really awesome. Your sync, phone visibility, all that kind of stuff there. Now going into the settings here for a little bit. Now going into connections here, you will see just your basic stuff. Okay, Bluetooth, phone visibility, data usage, airplane mode, mobile hotspot, stuff like that. Now this phone here does not have a ton of features. Okay, it's not a feature packed phone. It does not have a lot of the stuff that you will see on more higher-end devices. But honestly, like I may mention, for the price of this phone and for what it is, it's pretty solid. Got your sound and vibration, notifications, display here for brightness, auto brightness, blue light filter, font and screen zoom, uh, screen mode. You have a adaptive display, cinema, photo, basic. You can also adjust those if you so wish. Got your home screen, you got easy mode on or off. So you can actually turn on easy mode on this phone. If you don't want to you know, use a standard mode, you can turn on easy mode. You also got your status bar here, which shows re recent notifications or battery percentage. Your screen timeout, block accidental touches, and screensaver. Now back out of here, go into wallpapers and themes. 
So you can download a bunch of things from the theme store on here. Wallpapers, you got a bunch of them to choose from. This one right here, I did download the ones on here currently. Also down here, you do have advanced features, which has your game mode, manage useful features while playing games, one-handed mode, quick launch camera. You got multi-window, direct call, smart alert, easy mute, swipe to call or send messages, dual messenger, send SOS message, or direct share. Now down here at device maintenance, you will see right here is like your cleaner for your phone. You got your battery down here, which will show you know how much battery percentage you have left, your battery usage, your power saving modes, you know, two days, four hours on mid, six days, 15 hours on max. Now get your storage here as well. Like I may mention, it does have 16 gigabytes of storage. However, I've already used 12.1 gigs out of 16 and there's not a whole lot on the phone to be honest with you. As you look down here, you will see that I got five gigs of apps, okay, and then Company that with the system storage. So as you can see right there, there's not a whole lot of storage here on this device, but there is an SD card, of course, and you're able to set your photos and videos to the SD card to leave all the storage for your apps. So let's go ahead and back out of here. Now you have memory. This phone does have two gigabytes of RAM. Now we'll go ahead and back out of here. You have your apps, you have your lock screen. So you have your screen lock type, you have your clock style, Roman clock, face widget. So get quick access to useful information on the lock screen, contact information, notifications, and app shortcuts, biometrics and security, you have your face recognition. So this is not set up, so I'm not gonna be able to test this out for y'all. This phone does not have a fingerprint scanner, but it does have face recognition. It's not the most secure in the world, but it does have it. And you also have a bunch of stuff down here as well as secure folder, app permissions, monitor, secure startup, encrypt SD card, and other security settings there as well. Now you got your cloud and then accounts, Google, accessibility, general management, help, about phone, uh, software update, and if you choose to activate developer options. Now looking here into software, this phone does run Android 8.0 Oreo with Samsung Experience version 9.0. So when you pull the phone out of the box and you get it all set up, it reminded me a lot of the Galaxy S9. You know, by the way, the home screen looked and the way that the feel of it and everything it had a lot of experiences of a Galaxy S9. There is no Bixby button on this phone. This phone does have Bixby. Uh, it's not on here right now. I mean, it, it's, it's somewhere in here, but right now with this launcher, I don't see Bixby, which is a good thing. But there is no button to accidentally press, nothing like that on here. You just swipe over and Bixby is there. So, but with a Nova launcher, yeah, it ain't there. So that's a good thing. Now, as far as the battery, I believe the battery is a 3300 milliamp hour battery that, like I may mention, is non-removable. And the battery seems to be pretty solid on this phone. Battery lasts you a long time, no problems, no issues whatsoever. Now on the call quality and reception. Now this is something here that gets ignored a lot, but I want to kind of bring it back up because it's very important in the phone still. It's call quality and reception. Now this is on the Verizon network and reception has been very good. Call quality is really good out of that receiver and with no issues with drop calls, no issues hearing anybody. It just sounds really good and no issues there. Now I want to show you some benchmarks that I ran on this phone. And they're pretty good. And I'm gonna also play one game. I wanna play PUBG, a very graphic intense game, of course. And we're gonna see how this phone here can handle it. So let's go ahead and go in here and we'll find Geekbench 4. And this phone got a score of 1170 single core score and a multi-core score of 4018. In my opinion, that's a pretty respectable benchmark score. Now benchmark scores, of course, does not apply to everyday usage. But it's something to go by. Now going on over to N22 here, go ahead and bring this up and see what kind of score we had here. And as you see here, we got a score of 91,346, which like I said, is not a very bad score for this phone. And for the performance it provides, yeah. I mean, these scores are good. The phone performs good. So no problems there. So let's go ahead right now and we'll jump into PUBG. And I'll play a little bit here for y'all. So let me get this here set up and I'll come back shortly. Okay, so we're into PUBG now. And as you see right here, very, very smooth. Okay, I don't really see any 
I don't want to see any frame drops. There we go. Let's go ahead and pick up some stuff here. But as you're seeing right there, the game is very, very smooth. Uh, you see a few drop frames just here and there. But honestly, for gameplay, this thing does very good. Uh, it does get a bit warm after playing for just a few minutes. So anyway, I got knocked out kind of early, but you can see the gameplay there. Gameplay is very smooth. Uh, I had no issues really was major drop frames. Had a few drop frames here and there, but very, very minimal. So it plays PUBG very well. So I can about imagine it would play other games without any problems whatsoever. And like I may mention, the phone already feels a little bit warm back here in the camera area with just a few minutes of play time. So just be prepared for that. You know, the phone does get warm. Now we're gonna check out these cameras and just see how they are. There is a lot of features in this camera. On the left bottom there, you will see it has Bixby Vision as well as stickers. You swipe this way here, you'll see a bunch of modes like auto mode, pro mode, night mode, continuous shot, all kinds of modes there you can choose from. Swipe this way here, you'll get a bunch of effects. Now up top here, you'll see a front facing camera button, your full screen mode, which you've pressed that, goes into full screen. You also have your flash as well as your settings button here. Now in the settings, you got a 13 megapixel camera in the rear and it drops down from there. Video size records in full 1080, 1920 by 1080 and it drops off from there. You can see one by one HD as well as VGA. For the front camera, you also got a 13 megapixel camera and it drops down from there as well. You can also record in full 1080, 1920 by 1080 and one by one HD and VGA. You also have safe pictures as previewed. Shooting methods here, you can tap screen to take selfies or show palm. Uh, hold your hand out with your palm facing the camera and have your picture taken after just a few seconds. So yeah, there you go. You got a self timer, grid lines, location tags, quick launch, floating camera button, volume key function here. You can, you can use your volume button to take a picture, kind of like a dedicated camera key. Record video, zoom, or your system volume. And that's about it. And so let's go ahead right now and take just a quick picture here. I got my little uh, remote control to my fan here. Let's go ahead and focus this in. Take a picture. All right. And we'll see how that picture looks. So here, in just this normal lighting, the picture came out very crisp, very clear. Um, no blurring. I mean, it's really clear. So I can about imagine how the outside pictures do. I don't have any outside photos to show, but just indoors here, very good looking picture, very vibrant and very clear. So let's go back home and I'm gonna give you some pricing that this phone is going for at the moment. Now, prices are all over the place, but if you want the straight talk version of the J7 Crown, you're gonna pay right at $99.99 for this phone, which honestly, from the full price it was when it released at $189, I think $99 is a really good price for this phone, especially how it performs and how it works. I mean, it's, it's a smooth phone. Yes, it does not have a ton of RAM, but just don't have 50 apps in the background and you ain't got to worry about it. Uh, internal storage is my biggest complaint. Uh, was only being 16 gigs, 32 would have been a lot better. And I would have loved to have seen a fingerprint scanner instead of Face ID if I'd have had a choice. But that's just the way it is. The micro USB port on the bottom, that don't bother me. Micro USB, USB Type C, I do prefer. But I will still use micro USB all day long. Don't bother me in the least. Now this phone is also available for Total Wireless, Simple Mobile, and other and other carriers as well. And the phone just works, okay? It works good, it works well. Battery life is good, performance is good, screen quality is good. It has a regular 16 by nine ratio, 5.5 inch display, cameras are good. Sound quality is, it's good, but I mean, it's not like super loud coming through that side mounted speaker, but at least it's not a rear mounted speaker. So it does sound pretty decent. And so, you know, prices do range depending on where you buy this phone. If you buy it at Best Buy, for Total Wireless, it might be a different price than straight-top versions at Walmart. So I can't give you a definite price. I just do know 
This is a straight talk bottle here, and it is 99 bucks at Walmart. So that's a pretty good deal. And if you can get it on sale, hey, it's even better than that. So do I recommend this phone? And honestly, I can say yes. So that's just my review here on the Samsung Galaxy J7 Crown. If you found this video helpful in any way, hit that like button. Any questions you may have, leave it below in the comment section. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Hit that bell for notifications. I really appreciate it. Y'all have a good one, and thanks for watching.